UFC 205, motherfucking New York. Let's get into it. Pennington and Tate. I'm surprised with Raquel Pennington, you know. Based on her record from before, I thought, you know, it was going to be a bit iffy when it comes to you know, winning illusion. But she did rack up some good, you know, victories. Took Holly home to split decision. You know, the former Bantamweight champion. Fast forward, now she's facing Misha Tate. Her former teacher on the tough, on a tough season. Between her and Ronda Rousey. I think that Tate has it. I shouldn't even say a thing. Most likely... <laughs> Most likely Tate's gonna get it because I think what Raquel Pennington brings to the table, Misha Tate has already seen already, based on her years of fighting. But for Raquel, I think that she, either either she or her coaches may be slightly aware that Misha Tate will most likely try to go for a takedown if it seems that she's getting beat on the stand up. So what Raquel, I think what she would try to do is try to she would try to keep it standing up. You know, probably go for the counter strike approach because when, remember, when Jessica I was using the counter striking approach to Misha Tate, she got some good strikes in. And then, of course, Misha Tate resorted to her background in grappling and got Jessica I down. So, I think that they're going to try to do that. They're going to try to anticipate Misha Tate going for the takedown and then, you know, from there either defending it or unfortunately, you know, get caught. And. And then let's not forget, you know, Misha Tate, you know, she suffered from a broken nose and then she's back in the game. So if Raquel, if she's really trying to, you know, make a statement, she's most likely going to try to go for the nose. Because if she can, you know, even damage that nose slightly, that's more than likely going to rock Misha Tate or get her off, off center as a whole. And from there, she can do some major damage. So, going for, you know, going for Misha Tate, there's a window for Raquel to win this second one JJ versus KK I'm going with Joanna on this one I think that Joanna striking out uh, outclasses you know Carolina's you know based on what we've seen of course and in, um, in Muay Thai I think she has the stamina stamina for it it seems that when she gets in her groove you know she's even more difficult you know to, to take out in addition her takedown defense has improved as we've seen in the Claudia Gadelia fight Number two, that is. That being said, KK, she does have the tools to win it. One thing, if not two, that people, sh people, her coaches and Carolina should watch out for, excuse me, not so much watch out for, but keep in mind is that her stamina. It's a five, five minute round, and I think Carolina understands this, so she shouldn't burn herself out as much, you know, trying to get a win. I don't think she would do that, but. You know, again, I don't know her mentality, so she may try, you know, try to get the win, you know, try to get the win from the jump, like Claudia was doing, you know, just out the gate, you know, it was just, just fifth gear and shit. But, you know, looking back based on her fighting style, she doesn't, I think she'll, I think this will go five rounds. Then the second one is to disrupt Joanna's flow, because in addition to her takedown defense, she's more, she's more deadly when she has her group, when she has her flow, realize, you know, how many shots she can pick off on you, where it's like from two to four to four combos, that's when she's most deadly. We've seen the Claudia Gadelia fight, we saw in the Cookie Monster fight, we saw in the, in the Penny fight. One fight that she seemed to have a bit trouble in was a Valley Laterno fight. Whenever Joanna would try to use, whenever she would hypothesize her flow, you know, saying, okay, let me see if I can go, you know, try to switch up gears a bit Valerie Valerie you know she countered right back with a counter strike which I think Carolina would try to do in this fight to try to disrupt her flow and not have her get the advantage when it comes to you know striking or I mean significant strikes in addition I think if KK could you know get her in the clinching game using knees like she did with the Rose Nami Yunus fight that could bring Joanna's stamina down a little bit so when it comes to the later rounds it, it, it could seem that you know Joanna's stamina level could be on par with Carolina's or maybe below depending on how much damage Carolina does. In addition, I think that Carolina would how do how do I put this? Cuz even though Claudia has a better background when it comes to grappling, I think Carolina is stronger physically. So she most likely try to put pressure putting pressure on her would be good. And if she does take it to the cage, you know, like Dom Dominic Cruz said, don't try so much don't waste so much energy trying to keep her on the cage. 
and you know she's gonna skate back off a little bit but keep that distance to where you, you know you still tee off on her and when she's trying to make a move then go back in and you know once once again that being said she has the tools to beat it in addition I forgot about her Brazilian Jiu Jitsu background I don't know how deep she is when it comes to belts but if she does take her down which I could see based on her strength you know from an outside leg trip or inside leg trip from the clinch it'll be interesting to see you know what Jiu Jitsu tool she has in store or would she just try to keep her on the ground and use ground and pound even though even though I mentioned all that she has the tools I'm going for JJ Steven Thompson, Wonder Boy, and the chosen one, Tyron Woolley. I like my boy Tyron Woolley. I'm just, like, y'all saw the video. I was shocked as fuck when he knocked out Robbie Lawler. That being said, I think Steven Thompson has it because Tyron Woolley's game plan is the antithesis of Steven Thompson. I think Steven Thompson has a has a great game plan and fighting style that could easily take down someone someone's fighting style as Tyron Woodley's. You know, he has long legs, you know, his kickboxing record, like 57 and zero and shit. In addition, he has good takedown defense. Chris Weidman, you know, I believe he's his trainer, you know, besides being his best friend, best friend or, you know, good friend. You guys know what I'm talking about. So I think he has this one in the bag if he uh, if he just keeps his distance. The thing is, like, Tyron, like, with Tyron Woodley, it's like in the early rounds, like, motherfucker's dangerous. You know, he has knockout power. He mentioned that he was working with people with fighting styles similar to Wonder Boys. He brought in Sage Northcutt, I believe. So I'm curious to see how his approach is going to be towards this fight. And in addition, you know, he has a wrestling. I believe he, I believe he can get in there, you know, based off the training. You know, bringing bringing in people with a similar fight style, like Wonder Boys. My question, my question. I think a lot of people question it question is when it comes to Tyron Willie is like if it does go towards five round rounds how's his stamina going to be you know Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan you know excuse me he mentioned it before you know because of his uh physique you know it's kind of hard it's kind of difficult to you know maintain the stamina have it be congruent you know so that's going to be in question too if it goes towards it but if Wonder Boy can get past like the first or second round I believe he'll be able to get it get the title be a decision i don't see a knockout i don't see a knockout for um wonder boy if anything tyron but like i mentioned before y'all i got wonder boy chris ryman yo romero i'm kind of fucking surprised based on the weigh-ins do look the same like he did you know before you know when he, uh before he got caught so my question is, you know, like, does he have ring rust? You know, has he been training recently? You know, like, how's his, is his fight style still going to be the same? Or did he do any, do any tweaks? You know, because both of them, you know, strike, they're, um, they both have good backgrounds in striking. I mean, excuse me, wrestling. And, of course, they're good strikers, too. I think you all may be a bit faster. I mean, after the USADA, yeah, you know, we're going to have to, we're just going to have to find out. But, you know, based on, you know, the previous fights, I think he'll be a bit faster and most likely stronger than Chris Weidman, but I'm still I'm still going for Chris. I mean because you know we've seen it you know after the people that get popped by Usada you know their their game plan and overall performance just goes down. So Chris Chris Weidman, um, for sure it'll be easier to take down your Romero. I think he just has to watch out you know for the counter strikes that your your Romero could do. For, you know as we've seen in the um, Tim Kennedy fight. You know, before all that bullshit, you know, third round shit. So, Chris Reitman for sure. Most likely TKO, I want to say, round two. And then, lastly, Conor McGoddamn Gregor versus Eddie motherfucking Alvarez. Eddie has the tools, like I mentioned with Carolina. Eddie has the tools to go for it. I mean, he's fought opponents with a slight larger reach advantage when it comes to striking, but... You know, based on the strikes that you know he take, he can take a hit. He can definitely deliver a goddamn hit, as seen in the RDA fight. He has no problem, you know, going in and using his wrestling on Conor McGregor, which I think he will do, and a lot of people do. You know, he was talking about how he would utilize a different game plan approach, but I think what's going to happen is Conor's going to hit him with the left. Realize, you know, because of the the reach disadvantage, because Conor has 74, I believe, and Eddie Alvarez has 60. Eight, I probably messed up on the numbers, but you know, you, you guys get the picture. That 
that based off that he was trying to get in even closer and you know try to pin him against the cage my 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 question is that i hope like will he try to use that the entire five rounds it does he have the gas tank for that because with the, with anthony pettis fight he was using he was using that but it was getting less effective towards the third round you know and then you know with connor's takedown defense you know we've seen in an ads fight but then you know chad mendez he was able to take him down then and then it could also be said that, you know, his takedown defense has improved since the Chad Menzies fight. So it's going to be interesting to see his takedown defense in this fight because most likely we're going to see it. And are we also going to see, you know, his footwork, him being on the balls of his feet? Or is he going to, you know, just be, you know, flat-footed and, you know, right in his face and using little, little, little angles and head moving like he did in the DS fight, part two, of course. So I'm going for Conor McGregor for sure. And that seems to be it, y'all. I would love to do, you know, the past, you know, the uh, the prelims for sure. But I, I can't, off the top, I can't remember, but I know for sure I have, I got Frankie Edgar and uh, Miller for sure. Fucking sucks that fucking um, Kelvin couldn't even make weight. That's total bullshit. But, you know, fucking, fucking shut up. Anyway, those are my predictions, guys. Conor McGregor. I want to say I want to say it'll go to decision. I don't think gonna knock. I don't, I don't think gonna knock Eddie Harris out. Decision. Chris Chris Weidman TKO round two. Joanna, uh be a decision. Thompson. That's gonna be a decision too. And then Tate. That's gonna be a decision as well. Thank you guys for watching. I really need to find some fucking time schedule to make these videos because I've been lazy and I've been procrastinating i'll admit it guys but thank you again to those who are watching of course shout outs to canon wiz river valley canon wiz river valley like in the three horsemen y'all you guys have a good one be safe jbtv offline